So hi everyone, my name is Luca Genesali, um, and uh, my talk today will be about a tree matching and sparse graph alignment, right? So this is a joint work with Laurent Massoulier. And in order to um, introduce the, the graph alignment problem, I will first speak about a famous graph problem, which is the graph isomorphism problem. So we are given two graphs here, say G and G prime, and we're asking the following question. Uh, can we find a graph isomorphism between these two graphs uh, that has a bijection f from the vertices of g to the vertices of g prime such that f preserves edges, right? So you may know that uh, finding such an f uh, when possible is uh, extremely difficult. There is no polynomial time uh, algorithm that succeeds uh, for now. And it's also interesting because this problem is believed to be neither np nor np-complete. Right? So this is an interesting um, example, perhaps, uh, when looking at the uh, p equals np conjecture, for instance. Um, so if we modify a little bit the setting of this problem, uh, then we switch to graph alignment. So here we can tolerate some random noise between these graphs. Right? So as you see, some edges can appear, some can disappear. Uh, but we're asking the same question in a relaxed version. So is there a bijection f that preserves most edges? In this case, we cannot hope for an isomorphism because the, the graphs are not uh, isomorphic anymore, but still we're looking for a bijection that preserves most edges, right? So formally, um, f will have to minimize the following quantity, right? So this can be written as an instance of the quadratic assignment problem which is the maximization of the trace of g pi g prime pi transpose, where pi runs over all permutation matrices and g denotes both uh, the graph and the uh, adjacency matrix here. So this problem, this maximization problem, uh, is uh, unfortunately known to be NP-hard, right? So uh, as you can see, graph alignment is a difficult problem. And even if it's uh, it's a simplest uh, version in some sense, which is the isomorphism case, is also non-polynomial, right? So uh, what people usually do in the literature uh, is that they introduce uh, random graph models and they try to find algorithms that uh, succeed uh, for, for this task uh, in some range of parameters and uh, with high probability when the, the number of uh, nodes goes to infinity, right? So this is what we'll do here. Uh, we're considering the most famous random graph model, which is the Erdosreni random graph. So it's simply a graph with n vertices where each edge is present with probability p independently from all other edges, right? So there is no geometry in this graph. There is no structure. Uh, but since we're looking at two graphs, we, we need the following correlated Erdosreni model. Um, and we also need to plant a permutation in the model, right? We, we are going to plant a structure, which is here a permutation sigma that we would like to recover after all with an algorithm uh, with high probability, right? So let me describe a generative uh, way to draw these graphs. So first we can start with the parent graph G0 of parameters n and p over s, a simple Erdos-Schrenny graph. So here s has to be greater than p, of course, in order to uh, generate G0. And then we, um, we draw G1 and G2 prime uh, as follows. So we, um, we form G1 as an S subsampling of G0. So that is just uh, keeping each edge in G0 with probability S independently. So you form a random subgraph of G0 with the good density of edges. And then uh, we do uh, the same for G2 prime. So another independent S subsampling of G0, independent from the subsampling of, G, uh, of G1. So you see here that you have two children of the same parent graph, and these two children indeed are correlated. When you look at the correlation uh, on one edge, you'll uh, find something which is close uh, to S. Right. So uh, as I said, this is also a planted model, so we have to plant a permutation. And to do so, we, we shuffle the labels of G2 prime uniformly at random to form G2. Right. So formally, this can be written at the, as a matrix uh, multiplication with a planted phi here, which is the uh, planted uh, matrix of a uniform permutation sigma. Right. 
So now that the problem is correctly defined, let me give you a few results that are previously known uh, about this problem. So the main, um, the main problem that was studied until now is the exact recovery of uh, sigma, right? So we know quite a lot of things about this. So we first know the information theoretical bound um, that claims that this problem is feasible uh, if and only if NPS, which is the mean degree in the intersection graph, is at least log n, right? So uh, this problem is feasible uh, without taking any computational constraint into account, right? But um, for algorithms, for polynomial time algorithms, um, we have uh, state-of-the-art results that are quite recent uh, that show that there is a polynomial time algorithm that succeeds uh, with high probability if NP is greater than log N to the power alpha, and if S is close enough to one, that is, the graphs are uh, uh, highly correlated. Um, but in any case, you see that the exact recovery requires at least uh, a mean degree in the graphs of order log N, right? In this work, we actually focused on another regime, which is uh, waste parser where the um, mean degree here, NP, is of order one, that is uh, constant, right? So uh, we cannot hope for a, uh, the exact recovery of sigma uh, because of the IT thresholds. Um, so the problem we addressed is uh, that of partial polynomial time uh, recovery of sigma, right? So the objective here is relaxed. Uh, we, we, we want to find uh, a one-to-one -one mapping, not necessarily a bijection, such that the overlap with uh, the, the true planted one, sigma, uh, defined in terms of the fraction of uh, correctly matched nodes is positive. And we also want the uh, fraction of uh, incorrectly matched nodes to, to vanish when uh, n uh, tends to infinity, right? So uh, we can sum up these, uh, these results in the following diagram uh, in S and lambda, with lambda equals NP, the, the mean degree. You see this uh, blue area here is the uh, zone where exact reconstruction is uh, feasible without no computational time constraints. And the upright uh, green triangle here is uh, the state of the art situation for poly polynomial time feasibility of exact reconstruction, All right? Uh, in the blank zone, uh, where we cannot hope for exact reconstruction, uh, we found a new uh, zone, a new uh, regime, where uh, partial reconstruction was polytime feasible. Uh, so you see, uh, there's a regime of lambda, uh, which are all constants, and a regime of S that can be uh, eventually bounded away from one, uh, where this uh, partial reconstruction is uh, feasible with an algorithm that succeeds in polynomial time. Uh, so in order to describe, to explain our uh, method, our algorithm, I will first uh, start by uh, defining the matching weight of two trees. So now we are going to speak uh, about trees because when you look at neighborhoods in, in the uh, Erdostrini graphs of constant uh, mean degree, you will, uh, you will see uh, trees. So given two rooted trees, their matching weight at depth D is defined as the largest number of leaves at depth D of a common subtree, right? So uh, in this example here, we can see that the matching weight at depth three of T and T prime uh, is uh, seven, right? Uh, where one of the optimal uh, common rooted subtree uh, is highlighted here in uh, red. So this uh, matching weight um, captures the uh, similarity between, uh, between trees. And it has also a nice property because we can uh, compute these weights recursively with the following formula. Uh, knowing all weights at depth d minus one, we can compute the, the weight at depth uh, d uh, by matching all pairs of subtrees that are rerouted in uh, children i of the root in t and children u in the root in t prime. And uh, we uh, want to find an optimal matching of these subtrees uh, to maximize the uh, total weight, which is the sum of the uh, weights at depth d minus one. See, so here the supremum here is over all matchings of these uh, children of the root in t and children of the root in t prime. Right. So. Uh, now that we define these uh, weights, 
let me uh, give you the intuition for the main results. So remember that here we, uh, we're working with uh, G1 and G2, two uh, random graphs from the correlated Erdos-Schwenny model with a planted permutation sigma and P, which is lambda over N, uh, so, so that we have a constant mean degree, right? So uh, let's take I in G1 and U in G2 and assume that there are actual matches so u equals sigma of i. Then uh, when we look at the neighborhoods of i in g1 and uh, of u in g2, um, <coughs> they are close to Galton-Watson trees uh, of offspring uh, Poisson of lambda. Uh, and that is the interesting part is that they have an intersection of offspring also Poisson of lambda s, right? So when we look at the matching weight of the tree that we see, uh, we uh, obtain at least the number of leaves at depth d in the intersection, which is of order lambda s to the power d, right? So looking at those matching weights uh, can give us information on the fact that the, the, the two uh, vertices are matched. Uh, but we have to wonder what happens, what happens in the uh, case where u and i are not matches. Well, as a first approximation, we can assume uh, the neighborhoods to be independent Galton-Watson trees of offspring Poisson of lambda with no uh, trivial intersection. And we need a result to bound matching weights of such independent trees. So this is what we did in the uh, paper. We found a regime of lambda and S where uh, actually um, the, 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 the exponential growth rate of the uh, matching weight at depth D is strictly less than lambda S uh, when the two trees are independent Galton-Watson trees, right? So this can enable, by the way, uh, can enable, enable us uh, to discriminate uh, trees that are correlated from trees that are independent. Uh, so when we know that, we can think uh, of comparing uh, the weight of the neighborhoods to a given quantity, which would be here, lambda s to the power d, saying, well, if it's greater than i and u are matched, if not, I won't match them. So this might be a good idea, but actually this is not the optimal idea, because as you see here, uh, i and u may be distinct and still, <coughs> sorry, share a common uh, subtree, which is, say, a uh, big part of the intersection graph. Uh, in this case, when I will compute the matching weight, I, I will find something big because of this um, common subtree, right? So in order to avoid uh, this kind of problem, we use what we call the dangling trees trick. Uh, instead of looking at just a single um, weight uh, centered in I and U, we're going to, to, to look at uh, several weights, actually two weights, at depth uh, d minus one, that are weights of subtrees that are rerouted in uh, neighbors of i, uh, j and j prime, and neighbors of u, v and v prime, right? So uh, that way, we actually avoid this problem because this uh, common subtree problem will uh, arise in at most one of the two cases, right? Uh, as you can uh, you can see in the, on, the, on this uh, figure here, right? So uh, we can uh, now give the the main result uh, to conclude. So the, the the algorithm is as follows: We are going to to look at all pairs i and u, and uh, assuming that their d neighborhoods are trees, so up to depth d we see trees, and then we are going to match i and u if and only if there exists two different vertices of i in g, in g1, say j and j prime, two different uh, neighbors of u in j2, say v and v prime, such that, such that the weights of the um, uh, subtrees rerouted in j, v, uh, and uh, j prime and v prime are all greater than a, a, a threshold tau, right? So this way, uh, the performance of our uh, algorithm will be far better uh, than, uh, than the previous one, right? So um, uh, the, the, the main result is, is as follows. Uh, assume that uh, lambda times s is uh, strictly greater than one. This corresponds to uh, survival of the intersection graph, which carries, uh, in fact, the, the correlation. 
then we found a regime of lambda and s um, such that for d of order log n and for tau of order gamma to the power d minus one, where gamma is defined in the previous uh, result, then with high probability, we, uh, we can actually uh, partially uh, recover uh, sigma. So the overlap is positive and the fraction of incorrectly matched nodes is vanishing. Right. So uh, feel free to come and ask questions to have further information. Uh, I thank you for uh, your attention.